Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post some videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So I know today is Saturday when this video is going up, and I know I said in the intro that I only upload on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I wanted this video to go up on Saturday because next Tuesday I have my three year anniversary video going up. And um, yeah, so this is going to be my may to july wrap up really just june and july because i've read nothing for the month of may nothing um we all know how my reading has been going lately it's been um terrible but i will say for the month of july i did spike back up on my reading so i'm super excited to be back into reading the amount of books that i do um but yeah we're gonna dive right into this video so starting off with um june i did not read a lot of books i only read three in the month of June. So the first one I read was Return to Me by Lynn Austin. I read this with my sis Stephanie over at Coasting Beauty and Books. This was our buddy read for um, the month of June and this is the first book in the Restoration Chronicles which is basically a trilogy that follows some of the prophets. This one focuses mainly on the prophet Zechariah as well as Haggai. Haggai, don't know how you say the name, however you pronounce the name but um I gave this five stars this book wrecked me if you saw my vlog and I keep talking about this vlog in my videos because that vlog really just there's a lot to unpack in that vlog that I made so that vlog um I talked about how this book specifically pages 309 and page 310 yes I remember those pages they wrecked me they um wrecked me in a beautiful way because it really just made me realize some things about myself um and about where I am in God and um what I believed about certain things and um this is just Zechariah was everything to me Zachy as they call him was a phenomenal Yael <laughs> she needs a behind whooping um I wanted to beat her so bad um and it basically takes place during a time of I think it's Cyrus or is it Darius Cyrus yeah, when King Cyrus allows the Jews to go back to Jerusalem and some of the Jews do go back to the Jerusalem and they have to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple and things like that. So it takes place during that time. Um, but yeah, this actually like really inspired me to really want to study Zechariah a lot more. Um, so I will be studying him soon. Don't know when because I want to get through the Gospels first. But I do want to um, study the book of Zechariah really soon, the prophet Zechariah. Um, but this was phenomenal. I highly recommend this. Highly, highly, highly recommend this book this book will make you cry it will make you laugh it'll make you cry some more tears um five stars this literally has now like gotten a special place in my heart it's up there with my tessa abshar books for me this was phenomenal like excellent excellent book so we have this then i read book two in the global search and rescue this is the heart of a hero by susan may warren this is a <sighs> they put contemporary romance but I don't really feel like it's contemporary, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but this is book two in that series. I did read book one, which book one is, oh God, what's the name of that book? I have it right here. The Way of the Brave. The Way of the Brave is book one. And this one just follows up with two of the characters from book one, Arya and Jake. Is his name? Arya and Jake, yeah. I gave this four stars. This was cute. This was funny. I love Arya and Jake because they have such a really strong and interesting um, relationship their dynamic their conversation is just comical they're both the more comical characters of the trilogy um so yeah I enjoy this I did enjoy I think I saw a little bit of Orion in here I can't really remember um but I will be rereading this because I didn't tab it of course um you guys know when I do get review books I do read them in a timely fashion so that I can get the reviews up but I don't always annotate and um I'm big on annotating because it helps me to remember things and if I don't annotate I don't remember hence why I don't really remember much about this book except that I liked it. I like Jake and Aria and yeah. The third and final book that I read for the month of June was Apollyon which is book five? Book five in the Left Behind series by Tim LaHaye and Jeremy Jenkins. Gave this a four stars right? Make sure yes four stars. Um don't remember anything about this book honestly. I'm not even gonna sit here and lie and say that I do because I don't. Um I just know that I enjoyed it. I know that Jake, Jake, Rayford um is still definitely one of my favorite characters at the beginning of the series in book one left behind I did not like Rayford at all because of all the things that he did and the things you were learning about him but from books two and on I've been loving Rayford I've been enjoying him and his daughter his daughter Chloe I've been enjoying Buck his name is Cameron but they call him Buck um I've been enjoying him Sion oh we love Sion um the things that came to, to came, came to be uh concerning Hattie threw me off but uh yeah i still hate carpathia 
still do yeah I do but um i am thoroughly enjoying the series but book five was excellent so these were literally the only three books that i read for the month of june because i was dealing with a lot of stuff so moving on to july i did read a lot more for july though as you can see so the first book i have here is a nonfiction. is by bob yandy and um i've talked about this this pastor before because i did have a i had the privilege of going to a leadership conference where he spoke thoroughly enjoyed it and then I t picked up two of his books this one and the other one is called calling and separation this I gave five stars this one is phenomenal um leadership secrets of David the king it really focuses on psalms 131 which is literally just three verses but he literally breaks down each verse it makes it relatable makes you understand and helps you correlate it to David and yourself and um I was blown away I did mark up in here you guys can see like it's marked in here I, I ain't got no sticky notes because it's a tiny book but um i did thoroughly enjoy this book so that's a five star so then we have collateral damage by lynette eason now this is a romantic suspense yeah romantic suspense um i read this initially at the beginning of the year in january during my faith reads readathon and i had to, to give it a small like slight dnf because i was just reading too much romantic suspense at the time and i was just like romantic suspense out so i decided to pick this back up because i was enjoying it i did read it through all the way and annotated as well but i am going to give this a 3.75 star rating because i felt like it dragged for forever like it, there was a lot of plots a lot of dots to connect and they all connected towards the end, but I just feel like it could have just been done and over with quicker than what it was, um, which is why I gave it a 3.75 star rating. But I did love the characters. Can't remember their names. Brooke and Asher. Brooke and Asher was super cute. Um, I absolutely adore Asher and how he handled himself concerning his brother because his brother was a total douchebag. I did not like his brother at all. He was completely rude and just... <sighs> but... I think they were cute together and um i did enjoy it but again because it dragged on for me i couldn't give it a full four stars so i did give it a 3.75 but um i am going to continue on with book two i actually do have an arc from net galley so i will be reading the e-arc or i think i have actual physical copy yeah i have actual physical i have an e-arc from net galley and then i got an email from rebel about um some upcoming black tours i signed up for the sequel which i think is called acceptable risk so that is coming in the mail and that one follows sarah denning who is also a character in here which i'm really interested about reading so yeah i enjoyed it enough um like i said the only reason why i couldn't give it a four star a full four is because it dragged for me and i don't like books that drag especially suspenses like don't do it just don't but um thoroughly thoroughly did enjoy it but yeah we have that then we have the peasant stream by melody dickerson this is the 11th and final book in her hangenheim series the hangenheim series is basically a ya retelling of you know classic fairy tales um such as the pie pirate cinderella mulan um the princess and the frog those kind of classic fairy tales that we know and love she rewrites them with faith aspects which i adore i have only read books 9 10 and 11 9 is my favorite so far book 9 is called the warrior maiden right yeah book 9 was called the warrior maiden and i gave that book a complete five stars it's about mulan <laughs> we love mulan books book 10 is called the piper's pursuit that book is about the pie piper um which i did enjoy i gave that a four as well and then this one the peasant stream is a reverse reimagining of cinderella which it sounds funny but it really came out really well i give it a four stars i didn't really love it as much as i loved uh the ninth book which is the warrior maiden which i compare all the books to the warrior maiden because that literally was my like five star read from her um but this definitely basically in this the is instead of the prince being like the prince it's more so the princess who then falls in love with the poor boy and things like that it was beautiful i enjoyed it and um i got to see wolfgang and stefan steven however you say his name and um all her other siblings like i said i do need to read book one through eight um which i'm thinking about getting copies of because i did did really enjoy this and i know my sis stephanie has read the first two or three books i think um so i'm excited to continue reading all her works i know she has some adult versions as well where she has taken these fairy tales and rewritten them with faith aspects so i'm definitely going to be checking out melody dickinson's works um i do own them on ebook but i've just been in this mood of wanting to have physical copies which i probably shouldn't because i got no space but we do it anyway however but um yeah i gave this four stars thoroughly enjoyed it i think it's phenomenal if you know adults and teens read it um especially because it takes those classic fairy tales that we watch and see and heard of and she really just throws in scripture and she doesn't just throw it in like here you go boom bam in your face but no she like weaves it in beautifully so i really did enjoy this a lot next we have a book that i 
I predicted would be my favorite because I didn't care for the other two books. So I had a feeling that this book was going to be the book, which is probably why I waited so long to read the book. And this book was phenomenal, but it made me cry and it made me like really understand David even more. So back to Sheba by Angela Hunt. This is book two in the Dangerous Beauty trilogy. The first one is Esther. The third one is Delilah. We know how I love Delilah. I enjoyed Esther, but I, I gave both of those a four stars. Um, this one, however, got a complete five stars. Now I will say trigger warnings. It does talk about rape. Okay. It talks about the loss of a child. We all know the story of Bathsheba, um, her situation with David when he basically raped her, killed her husband, and then they lost their first child. Um, boy, Angela held no bone. She did not hold back. And um, this is not for the faint at heart. I read reviews um, of this book and a lot of people were a lot really negative about this, which I don't understand. Um, now, I know some people are very particular when it comes to their christian books now because i am a reader i love christian books and secular books like i like fantasies and paranormal romances and all that i don't just read christian books right i don't mind when an author goes into depth about a topic when they're going into depth about sex when they're talking about break when they're talking about murder like those are not difficult for me to read because i read them all the time in my fantasies okay but i've seen a lot of people complain about this book because they were upset with how she wrote david and how she wrote the situation also because they felt this was more of a story on nathan the prophet who basically was talking the the prophet that basically told david all the stupid stuff that he did that prophet that's in the bible um which it's biblical fiction and i'm gonna do a video because i don't think people understand that when you're reading biblical fiction it is based on the bible it is based on scripture but it's still fiction but at the same time i prefer when authors don't hold back in biblical fiction because the point is to bring the scriptures from the bible and make it more real now i'm not saying that scripture isn't real scripture is alive breathing well we know it's ever changing we know it changes for each season that we're in um something might mean one thing to me now and if i read that scripture five days from now or five years from now it'll mean something totally different but biblical fiction helps you understand it more which is why i love biblical fiction and i felt that this was so well written i personally love this um i'm gonna have a discussion video because i feel like there's a few books that they they, they cross the line but as a reader personally i don't mind when they cross the line as well as long as it's done elegantly and for a purpose okay don't just throw sex in it throw sex in it like what is you doing but if you're giving me a biblical fiction i need you to make sure that it correlates to the time that they're in and like when she did get raped there were some things being said to her from people and it kind of made her feel some type of way but understanding the times that it was it wasn't okay for a woman to be raped but people didn't do anything about it back then because they knew it happened and because she was a told woman which is like a very beautiful woman they kind of blamed it on that and because <clears throat> i'm gonna have a um book look tutorial coming on this book as much as i want to do delilah i'm definitely gonna do this one because this one definitely is like piercing my heart and my soul to actually discuss it in a video and of course do a beautiful makeup look because this green is gorgeous i love this green so that's gonna happen that's gonna be a thing and um I'm gonna keep moving because I can talk about this book forever so I'm gonna save my thoughts for that video which hopefully will be coming in the next two weeks but um beautiful beautiful written book I highly recommend it but again trigger warnings for rape um loss of a child um I, I don't want to say that word it, I don't know how to describe it because in the secular world in the it's, uh, the word I'm going to say might offend some people, but this is the only way that I can think of it, okay? The word is called slut, okay? So, um, there is a little bit of, like, slut shaming, in a sense, in this book. I don't really know another term to say it as. So, if you're offended by that, I apologize. I know some people are sensitive to certain words, but that is literally the only way that I can kind of, like, correlate it to any other other books that I read. But, um... It's, it's beautifully done, okay? That should just read the book. Just be prepared for the tears. You guys can see the blue tabs, right? Blue tabs and purple tabs. And there's a, I love when a book has purple tabs because that means there's a lot of scripture. And I'm the type, if you give me biblical fiction, I need scripture. Any type of Christian fiction, give me some type of scripture. I don't care what translation. Just give me scripture. 
but I digress moving on so then I read Keepers of the Covenant by Lynn Austin which is book two in the uh, Restoration Chronicles yeah of course this was my July buddy read with my sister Stephanie over at Quilting Beauty and Books and I gave this four stars I wasn't so okay so I love okay you see the tabs right I enjoyed this book a lot however I wasn't sold on the characters I really more so loved all the stuff that Ezra was saying this one focuses on the prophet Ezra so I was really sold on everything he was like saying and how him and ooh, what's her name Devora I feel like I'm not saying her name right but I think her name yeah Devora so um the things he and Devora were saying were so powerful but I was not sold on the characters and there were two characters in this book that pissed me off my sis Steph knows who I'm talking about because they made me mad from beginning all the way to the end. No, was it two characters or one character? No, it was two characters. Two characters. Um, this boy, what's this daggone boy name? Ruben and Sophia pissed me off so much. They gave me so many... They... Ruben and Sapphire were basically how I felt about Yael in book one. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like this. But this one, um, it basically takes place, it follows the Jews that were left behind in Babylon, who then decided that they wanted to go back to Jerusalem. So it takes place during that time, around the time of the Queen Esther situation where Haman tried to kill all the Jews. That is probably one of my favorite parts of the book because in the beginning you really get to see um, the Jews that were like left in Babylon and that type of providence and stuff and see how they fought during that time because we always hear about that time where um, Haman tried to kill the Jews, sent out the edict through the, the decree, excuse me, with the king's signature and then um, Mordecai rewrote a different decree saying that the Jews could now defend themselves. So this really one focuses on that and you could see like the death and murder and, and stuff like that. But it was again i wasn't sold on the characters as much so that's why i got a four stars um but i liked the cults and everything in here it was beautiful beautiful but wasn't so because i really do love book one and book one actually like had me in my feels actually had me crying tears so hopefully book three is better but yeah we have that and the final book that I read for the month of July is going to be Assassins by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins this is book six and Left Behind series and oh my gosh this got a 4.5 stars. So, first of all, Carpathia. <laughs> you know, in books 1 through 5, we see him as the Antichrist because they tell us that he is the possible Antichrist. He does things that an Antichrist does. However, there is a scene in here that just solidifies himself as the Antichrist. Um, just, it solidified him as the Antichrist for me. I'm just like, what? Like yeah so depending on how book seven starts especially with how book six ended that'll like be the icing on the cake for him to be the antichrist like this book is so like this series is phenomenal um again i'm waiting to see if any of them will be a five star so far they've been four stars or 4.5 but nothing has been like a solid five um i will be reading book seven for the month of august so we have a few books to go I'm hoping and praying that, you know, one of the books will be a five. But even if it's not, I still recommend it because this, this series is phenomenal. I'm enjoying them. I am listening to them via audiobook. Um, at first, I started out reading and listening to the audiobook and annotating. But now I listen to the audiobook and if there's something that sticks out to me, I will then annotate in my book. But I don't normally stick a sticky tab. I just highlight it or mark it with the color that it needs to be. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, these are the books that I read. For the month of july loved each and all i like all of these are pretty 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 good books pretty good books um great reading month i cannot wait to see what august holds um i will have that video as far as my annotating system because i know a lot of you guys are interested and some of you did and ask me your questions and things like that so i have all that written down i just need to pick a day to actually sit down and do it right because i do annotate differently um i have multiple annotating systems number one um i enjoy annotating books and it can be overwhelming at first but the more you use your annotating system and this this is pretty much how i have let me grab these so these are like my annotating cards where i keep so they're like doubled but i'm switching these because i have like i'm 
always changing my annotating system up um you can go as low as like four colors three colors two colors five i however have grown to use more colors so like i think the one that uses the most is like my fantasy fantasy annotating when i'm reading my fantasy novels i have a lot more colors there is one color missing actually two colors gray and brown that i need to add onto this list um i had one for harry potter books but i decided to I'm gonna continue reading Harry Potter just not now because I know that there's a lot of stuff going on right now with the author um just saying some saying some things I'm gonna just leave it at that so yeah um and then I have my biblical fiction one which you'll know about I have my other one which you'll also know about and then I have annotating for bible study like when I'm doing my bible study booklets and things like that and then for when I'm just reading like Christian nonfiction books um so I also annotate on my nook I annotate on my kindle I annotate a lot of different ways so that video will be coming where I'm going to break down how I annotate what I annotate um the things that I use what each color means like I'm going to break it down for you guys so that you know um I also annotate in my bible which that video will be coming soon as well because I will be updating my annotating system in my bible so um yeah but that is it for this video. I didn't mean for this video to be long-winded, but I hope you guys enjoyed all the books that I read for June and July. I'm hoping and praying that August is successful, successful because I have quite a lot of tomes to read. So yeah, we'll see. If you guys don't know what a tome is, a tome is basically a book that is over 500 pages. And I will be partaking in Tome Topple Round 12 in the month of August. So it's a two-week readathon where you literally just read books that are over 500 pages. And I have a total of like six, seven books on my list. So I'm saying six because I have six here. But I did order another book that possibly might be over 500 pages. I'm not sure how many pages that book is. But if it's not 500, then I'm sure it's like 400 and some odd pages. Actually, let me look now because I got some hefty goals to reach. Yeah, this book is only 435 pages. So not a lot of pages, not a lot of pages. So yeah, I am going to go and um, put all these books away on their shelves where they belong. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.